Internet censorship in China is pervasive and strictly enforced by the government. The country has constructed an elaborate system known as the Great Firewall to block access to thousands of websites and online services. According to the human rights organization Freedom House, China ranks last in the world for internet freedom. The Chinese government maintains that restrictions on the internet are necessary to preserve social stability and prevent the spread of harmful information. Censors carefully monitor the web and block content that is deemed politically sensitive or inappropriate. Major international social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are completely inaccessible in China without the use of special software to bypass filters. Chinese alternatives have emerged to fill the void, but they are closely monitored and restricted as well. Search engines like Google are blocked, and homegrown options like Baidu omit results the government wants to suppress. News outlets, human rights organizations, and dissident voices are systematically scrubbed from the Chinese internet. The Great Firewall utilizes advanced technology to blacklist websites and scan content in real time. China has an army of censors, estimated to number in the tens of thousands, who continuously prune the internet of prohibited material. Punishment for accessing or sharing banned content can range from website blocking to imprisonment. The government argues these measures are necessary for national security and unity. However, critics condemn China's extreme censorship as a violation of human rights and an impediment to the free flow of information. The Great Firewall blocks access to thousands of major foreign websites and services in China. This includes international social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, and Snapchat. Chinese censorship treats social media as a major threat as it provides a space for citizens to share information and organize outside of government control. Also inaccessible are most major Western news outlets, such as The New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, Reuters, BBC, Economist, and Guardian. Again, this allows China to control the narrative and prevent negative coverage of the government from reaching citizens. Search engines like Google and Bing are blocked, cutting off access to information the government doesn't want its citizens to find. E-commerce sites like Amazon, eBay, and Etsy are banned as well. Other blocked categories include foreign films, TV shows, books, and videos that contain banned content, as well as gambling, dating, and pornography sites. The firewall uses deep packet inspection to identify and filter prohibited sites and content as it flows into China. In addition to blocking websites, China employs filters to scrub the internet of content related to sensitive topics and events that cast the government in a negative light. The most heavily censored topic is the 1989 Tiananmen Square Massacre, where the military killed hundreds of pro-democracy protesters. Any mentions, images, or even vague references to the event are strictly forbidden online. For example, the government blocks search terms like Six Quarters Inches, June 4th, Tank Man, and even Big Yellow Duck after an internet meme used duck imagery in reference to the iconic photo of a man facing down tanks. Discussion of independence or uprisings in regions like Tibet, Xinjiang, Hong Kong, and Taiwan is also suppressed. Commemorations of the Dalai Lama's exile from Tibet see intensified censorship each year. In addition, direct criticism of Communist Party leaders and policies is routinely scrubbed from the web. Mentions of government officials are closely monitored, and unflattering comparisons to characters like Winnie the Pooh have resulted in temporary blocks of the beloved cartoon bear. Around politically sensitive events and dates, censorship ramps up dramatically. Even individual letters and numbers are banned if they may be used to spread subversive messages. For example, during an important Communist Party meeting, the letter N was blocked as it was being used to criticize plans to eliminate presidential term limits. Time frames like 10,000 years were also temporarily blocked when Xi Jinping was named lifelong leader to stop sarcastic dissent. The Chinese government uses a variety of methods to enforce its internet censorship regime. Complete blocking is reserved for sites deemed particularly dangerous, like Facebook and Twitter. Search results on approved Chinese platforms are carefully filtered to remove banned content. Certain keywords or images auto-trigger filters during web searches and block any associated results. For sites and content considered less of a threat, throttling and partial blocking are employed. Pages may load extremely slowly or fail to fully display. Videos buffer endlessly. The aim is frustration and creating additional obstacles to accessing information, rather than an outright ban. Instant messaging and social media are closely monitored, with algorithms automatically detecting prohibited terms and deleting content and accounts. Undercover sensors also manually review posts and remove anything critical of the government. Despite the multi-layered censorship apparatus, virtual private networks allow tech-savvy citizens to bypass blocks and access the global internet. VPN usage is officially illegal but loosely enforced, with periodic crackdowns. Authorities must walk a fine line between restricting access and hampering business operations that require global connectivity. China's censorship utilizes blocking, throttling, filtration, automation, human censors, legal deterrence, and selective enforcement to prune the internet of unfavorable information. It is a sophisticated system, but not in 
impervious. Rather than rely solely on censorship, China has actively developed homegrown alternatives to Western social media, news, and tech platforms. On the surface, this fills gaps left by banned sites, but in reality, it serves as a powerful propaganda tool. For example, WeChat is a ubiquitous Chinese app that combines messaging, social media, payments, and more. It has over 1 billion monthly active users in China. However, WeChat is closely monitored by authorities, automatically censoring content and surveilling users to quash dissent before it can spread. Chinese search engine Baidu rigorously filters results to promote state-sponsored narratives and bury controversial content. Its algorithm is designed to drown out anti-government material with celebrity gossip, e-commerce ads, and pro-China reports. Sina Weibo is China's highly popular Twitter-like platform with over 500 million users. It is subject to the same strict censorship as other domestic sites. A team of in-house censors at Weibo's Beijing headquarters rapidly deletes material deemed illegal or sensitive. Beyond the internet, China has constructed eerie copies of landmarks like the Eiffel Tower and Austrian villages to dissuade citizens from traveling abroad. Domestic theme parks recreate world wonders in a controlled setting flooded with nationalist messaging. The goal is to shape public opinion by curating the information environment Chinese citizens inhabit. On the surface, China's censorship apparatus appears comprehensive and the government projects an image of total control. However, the system has limitations and workarounds do exist. Some banned material can still be accessed by citizens motivated to circumvent the Great Firewall. For example, George Orwell's anti-authoritarian classic 1984 is surprisingly not blocked. And while controversial films may be banned in theaters, pirated DVDs are available on the street, and digital copies can be downloaded. Millions of Chinese citizens travel and study abroad each year, exposing them to uncensored internet and perspectives not available at home. Academics, business people, and others with international connections frequently use VPNs to hop the firewall. Within China's domestic internet, citizens use homophones, puns, and slang to discuss taboo topics without directly triggering keyword filters. Images like memes and emojis are used to creatively send political messages as well. Grassroots efforts persist to evade censors using technology like encrypted messaging apps, code words, and by storing content on servers outside China's jurisdiction. However, these require technical expertise beyond most average users. The threat of prosecution compels self-censorship for many, and for others, giving up some freedoms is an acceptable trade-off for stability and steady economic growth under authoritarian rule. So while imperfect, censorship broadly succeeds in controlling the narrative and quashing opposition. While China defends censorship as necessary for stability, experts argue it inflicts significant economic costs. Blocking foreign tech companies has fostered domestic alternatives, but reduced competition and innovation. Chinese firms mimic established platforms rather than developing groundbreaking services. Startup scene lacks vibrancy. Banned sites like Facebook, Google, and YouTube represent millions of lost advertising dollars. China forfeits potential revenue and jobs. Its consumer tech sector focuses inward rather than leading globally. Censorship deters foreign firms from operating in China. Policing speech to appease authorities adds expenses, uncertainty, and risks to reputation. Amazon, eBay, and others find the market inhospitable. Content filtering raises costs for Chinese tech companies, which must closely monitor platforms and users to avoid government penalties. Heavy-handed regulation stifles productivity. Travel and tourism sectors lose billions from censorship deterring Western visitors. Pervasive firewalls complicate visiting China for business or leisure. Economic fallout extends globally. International companies self-censor to keep access to Chinese market, spreading authoritarian values. Hollywood panders to censors, hurting creativity. However, China accepts these costs to maintain political control. Its domestic economy remains strong despite inefficiencies from censorship and lack of outside competition. In the estimation of party leaders, censorship delivers social order vital for continued growth and stability. They believe these benefits outweigh financial impacts on the economy as a whole. Despite pervasive censorship, surveys indicate many Chinese citizens tacitly accept limits on speech or are simply unaware of restrictions. For older generations who remember the Cultural Revolution's chaos, censorship provides welcome stability. Younger generations, on the other hand, have grown up with managed internet and censorship as the norm. Most are apolitical, prioritizing economic opportunities over abstract freedoms. Accustomed to domestic sites and apps, few feel deprived by lack of Google, Facebook, or dissenting opinions. Surveys show majorities believe some censorship protects public morals. However, when specific controversies flare up, frustrations boil over. For example, criticism exploded when authorities suppressed news of a deadly 2011 train collision. Outrage has erupted when popular figures have been censored online. Day-to-day, -day, censors tread carefully around public opinion. Allowing just enough criticism fosters the illusion of openness. Highly unpopular bans can be reversed to release pressure valves. But mention of unsolved grievances like Tiananmen Square remains utterly taboo. 
those who directly challenge censorship face harsh crackdowns, diluted public support, and closed off options to emigrate. Most citizens pragmatically self-censor and confine dissent to safe personal spheres. They use virtual private networks to access banned content for entertainment, not politics. However, quietly sharing banned material persists as small acts of rebellion. While many Chinese chafe at censorship, active opposition is limited. Acceptance, apathy, self-interest, and fear prevent confrontational resistance. But under the surface, evasion techniques quietly persist. The norm remains compliance, but complete contentment with constraints is improbable. China's censorship apparatus is codified and enforced through an extensive system of laws and regulations. Cybersecurity law gives government power to implement internet controls to preserve security and ideological purity, requires data localization and censorship cooperation from tech firms. State secrets law broadly defines prohibited topics and information that would damage the Communist Party's interests if published, justifies blocking sites and whistleblower suppression. Media regulations, strict licensing and oversight of traditional publications, broadcasters, and film, extends increasingly to internet video, podcasts, and live streaming. National security law, vaguely worded clauses against subversion used to justify censorship as upholding stability. Additional rules cover content restrictions in video games, advertising, social media posts, and domain name registration. New laws are frequently introduced governing emerging internet sectors. Regulators like the Cyberspace Administration of China coordinate censorship across agencies. Dedicated police units surveil the web and make related arrests, aided by informal citizen snitches. Penalties range from website throttling and account deletion, up to huge fines, imprisonment, and blacklisting companies from China. But enforcement varies, with crackdowns following disputes with authorities. The legal system broadly aligns with the political aims of internet censorship. Opaque rules maximize government flexibility and minimize meaningful legal challenges. Law is an instrument of control rather than protection. China employs a vast force of cyber police to monitor online activity and enforce censorship guidelines. Units exist at national, provincial, and local levels, with tens of thousands of personnel focused on cyber enforcement. Activities are centralized under the Ministry of Public Security. Cyber cops analyze content, track dissident internet users, and identify material to censor. They scour social media, messaging apps, and websites around the clock. When prohibited content is detected, cyber police notify relevant platforms to delete posts and block search terms. They track down users for questioning or detention. Cyber police units also provide censorship training and guidelines to tech companies. They supervise private firms' internal content screening operations. Police monitor and contain public reactions online during political controversies. Tactics include deleting posts, slowing website connections, and arresting vocal critics. Units also conduct cyber operations beyond China's borders. International campaigns aim to shape foreign views of China and compromise dissident networks abroad. The ever-growing cyber police force maximizes the Chinese Communist Party's control over online activities and narratives. From politics to pop culture, the internet is policed with meticulous precision and force. China's censorship practices have drawn increasing criticism from foreign governments, human rights groups, and business leaders. However, concrete actions to compel policy changes have been limited. Democratic states, including the U.S., Canada, Australia, and much of Europe, routinely condemn China's infringements on free speech. Activists lobby politicians to address censorship in bilateral talks with China. Groups like Reporters Without Borders, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, and Freedom House document and decry cases of censorship and persecution. They pressure China to uphold international human rights accords. Some companies have resisted Chinese rules. Google ultimately withdrew from the market in 2010 rather than comply with government demands on censorship and user data. But most tech firms acquiesce to maintain access, including Apple, LinkedIn, and Microsoft. Trade disputes have given some governments leverage to fight market access, gives foreign firms reason to accommodate some censorship. Hollywood films that criticize China are often barred from its box office. Overall, China's economic might has muted outside pressure. Wary of retaliation against their companies and residents, few countries impose direct censorship-related sanctions. The Great Firewall thus remains a largely domestic Chinese affair, with foreign complaints ringing hollow. Meaningful change likely requires internal pressure from Chinese citizens, not external forces. As long as the Communist Party retains domestic control, it will continue managing the internet on its own terms, largely unmoved by foreign opinions. Given the Chinese government's unwavering commitment to controlling the flow of information, the future prospects for loosening internet censorship appear dim. If anything, restrictions have tightened under current leader Xi Jinping, who has consolidated power and promoted a nationalistic agenda. Technologically, China is pouring resources into upgrading its censorship and surveillance capacities. Machine learning and artificial intelligence are being leveraged to parse 
content and identify banned material with increasing accuracy. Digital monitoring of citizens is growing more sophisticated as well. Economically, China continues rising as a global superpower, defying expectations that prosperity would naturally lead to social and political freedoms. The Communist Party's central argument is that their authoritarian model delivers results for the people. Demographically, younger generations raised on censored Chinese internet lack awareness and expectation of free speech rights. Having never experienced uncensored platforms, they readily accept restrictions as normal. Internationally, China uses its economic might to pressure foreign companies and governments against criticizing its human rights records, extending its censorship reach. Chinese citizens studying and working overseas bring home censored attitudes. While activists continue peeking through the Great Firewall and agitating for change, broad public acquiescence to censorship persists. Until Chinese citizens overwhelmingly demand free expression, the government will continue maximizing control over the national internet. Barring political reforms, the Great Firewall is likely to remain standing strong. In summary, China operates the most sophisticated and extensive internet censorship system in the world. The Great Firewall blocks thousands of foreign websites and services. Domestic alternatives promote state-approved narratives while closely monitoring users. An army of human censors and algorithms rapidly scrub prohibited content and dissent. The government claims these measures are necessary to maintain social stability and order. However, they violate free speech and restrict access to information. Censorship focuses on silencing criticism of the regime, discussion of historic events like Tiananmen Square, and interactions that could undermine the Communist Party. While pervasive, gaps exist. Some citizens access banned material through VPNs or when traveling abroad. Clever use of code words and imagery allow restricted topics to be discussed online, but these workarounds require effort the majority do not undertake. In the end, China has constructed an insulated, heavily curated version of the internet. For most citizens, censorship is accepted as the cost of stability and prosperity. The free flow of information is severely constrained by the Great Firewall, with the government firmly in control of the narrative.